sake of suspense, I'm hoping Houston wins. Because imagine if they win and put the champs on the brink. We're going to probably have a seven-game series. It'll be great. But I, I'm expecting Golden State to come out and take it tonight. And I'm expecting big games from Kevin Durant and Steph Curry. Kevin Durant now has had about two days to listen to how he should have taken the shot. And he should have taken the shot. And he probably knows it inside of himself. Mm -hmm. So I think he's going to come out and really kill them like he usually does from the mid-range. And then I think Steph has the same way, had two days to listen to how he faded in the fourth quarter. After that great third quarter, he's shimmying and all. That makes it worse. When you showboat like that, and I like the showboating, but when you do that and then disappear, it makes it worse. So I expect those two to come out with big games. There's an element to me of, to quote Rocky IV, the Russian is cut as far as how the Warriors lost in game four. We've never seen this team lose that way. We've never seen this team under Steve Kerr, with or without Kevin Durant, dominate a team in the third quarter and then blow that lead. We'd only twice this year seen this team have a double-digit lead going into the fourth quarter and lose that game. But game one of the season to Houston Rockets and last uh, two days ago to the Houston Rockets. This team all of a sudden feels vulnerable and I would imagine for them their sense of invincibility has been punctured just a bit when Steph, you know why Steph thought he could shimmy up the court with a minute left in the third quarter he thought what everyone else thought game's over yeah. I can showboat because we have won this basketball game I mean it's not officially already got to play the fourth quarter but we've never blown a lead like this but then they did so that plus the Houston crowd plus as I mentioned to you yesterday one of these games, Houston going to hit 17, 18 threes. Mm -hmm. Like, that's going to happen for all those reasons and the health factor. I think the Rockets are in the better position tonight than Golden State. Uh, the two questionable players for Golden State, Iggy and Clay. it really affects Golden State's abilities to defend, and especially on the perimeter and on the wings. Who else do they have to defend on the wings? Like, well, I mean, what type of defense they are they going to be able to play? And they're going against the worst team for these guys to be injured. That is a team that not only shoots the three, but has a bunch of depth on the wing. And you lose their athleticism. You lose the athleticism of Clay and Iggy. I mean, what do you have? Like, you got a bunch of jump shooters in KD and in Steph. So what I expect to happen, I look for Cleveland, I mean, for Houston to be able to get the win tonight at home. And I just, I haven't seen, and we saw the fatigue on LeBron, the best conditioned athlete in sports now. Right. We saw last night, either respiratory or his legs, the overall fatigue. If they play in this game with lower leg injuries, like, that's the least, that's the thing I wouldn't want to be injured at this point in the NBA season. Well, Anything under my hips. And with Clay having a knee and with the, um, with Iggy having the bone contusion, which is right below the knee, like, how are you going to be an effective jump shooter? We saw Clay come back into the game. The first shot he took, was a complete air ball. And even yeah. if and you the think, last shot. Well, and even if you think Clay will be able to, if he gets open, hit shots with the knee with the knee injury, so much of Clay's the way he gets open is moving off the ball. Yes. Quick cuts, moving off screens like that. The, the the knee injury hurts his ability to get open. Even if you see him in practice, oh, he can still hit the jump shot like that. And obviously, Iggy's entire if it was KD, is it would be different. Absolutely because you right. can still post him up, you can still put him at the three-point line, and he can shoot right over top people compared to the movement well, that Clay has. The question is, how bad is the knee? That's, that's to be, I mean, they seem pretty confident. They said a couple of days ago, oh, he's going to play. They don't seem to think it's serious, but let's see if it hinders him. How does Houston use that? Well, I mean, obviously it's just one less weapon that the Warriors have. It's easier to guard him, easier to stay with him so he doesn't get wide open. The, the thing, I, and, and again, I'm, I'm kind of assuming <clears throat> Clay will be Clay. If that's the case, I think the, in this series, the Warriors just have a lot more room for error. And that you, you saw in game four, Kevin Durant doesn't play well, especially in the fourth. He's 9 for 24. Steph disappears in the fourth. Clay is hampered and doesn't do anything in the fourth. And they still are up by 12 at, at, in the quarter and lost by three. Houston, on the other hand, gets 30 from Harden and 27 from Chris Paul. Uh, now, granted, Harden didn't play well in the fourth either, but 30 is 30. And so they, those two, as you said, they have to be great 
in, every, in the game for them to win. That's not the case with Golden State. I look at that a little differently. Because over the course of the game, Harden and Paul scored 57. Steph and Clay scored 55. They shot, they, Chris Paul shot 50%. Harden, though, shot, I'm doing the math real quick, 38%. Clay shot, or I'm sorry, Steph and Durant both shot 38%. Like, mm -hmm. those guys kind of, they, they did it in different times. Yes. Harden did it early. Steph did it in the third. CP3 did it in the second half. They did it different times, but they kind of canceled each other out. If I'm Houston, I'm like, man, my third leading scorer, Eric Gordon, was four for 14. Clint Capella was a non-factor. P.J. Tucker didn't make a shot. Like So for all those reasons, I think coming home, Houston actually can look at round. Because what Golden State can't do is say, Nick Young, he's going he's gonna to no, be the guy that saves us. Him. Sean Livingston, I, yeah, he can do better than two for five, but you can't rely on Sean Livingston for more than seven or eight points. Like All his shots are that herky-jerky 12-footer that mm -hmm. looks like a terrible shot every time, but he seems to make <laughs> yeah. it. So I just, I don't... I didn't think Houston played great offensively in Game 4. I thought they played superb, near-perfect defense in Game 4. Chris, and, but think about it. You said they combined for, what, 57? 57. 57. That's more than they averaged. Yeah. They usually give you 48 mm -hmm. in yeah. the regular season. Sure. You know? and, and Clay and Steph, that's about... Or they, Steph they and KD. That. Steph and KD average 55. Yeah, you're, you're right. Absolutely. Where Steph and Clay are, oh, okay. are up around, you know, they're around there, too. So. All right, Chris, stick around. We're going to take a break. Coming up, has LeBron James...